We're going to take this pile of junk and upcycle each piece into really pretty vintage inspired home decor. Let's get started. To get started, I wanna go over each piece and kind of give you an idea of what we're going to do with it. So my last thrifting trip, if you didn't see that video, I will link it up in the cards or down below. I bought these corbels. They're actually shelf brackets, I think, but I'm gonna use them as corbels. I have a special place to put these. Next, I have this basket that I got a few trips back. I can't remember when, but I'll link that video as well. In fact, I'll just link the whole playlist of our, our thrifting adventures. But I found this basket. It's about four inches deep. It's pretty. It does have a broken place. I'm going to paint it and use it for organization in our bathroom. On a recent trip, I came across this really beautiful silver pitcher. I don't think it's real. I think it's silver plated. And maybe I could look into that. I only paid about $4 for it. It does have some damage right here. I'm okay with that. And also the handle is broken. We're going to fix that. And I'm just gonna make it something really pretty. This bird cage is missing its bottom. That's okay. And it's pretty dirty and grimy. And I have a plan for it for our front porch. I think you're gonna like this one. And then I have this pair of nesting tables. These are the, they come in sets of three usually. The one is missing, the smallest one is missing. I'm okay with that. I don't like the top, it's a little tired. I'm gonna change this out. And I've already started to repair this one. I'll show you what I did to repair it. This little set of nesting tables was in pretty good shape except for one of the tables and the fact that there's one missing. It has been repaired or attempted to be repaired before. You could see here where it cracked. Somebody added some glue and some screws. Same thing here. This one's even worse. They've got screws going in that way and there's another screw. I mean, it's kind of a mess. This silver pitcher is next. It's really pretty. It was only $4 and here's why. It's missing a foot. You can see here it's got these beautiful feet on it. They're so pretty and obviously this one is completely missing. I'm okay with that because when I display it, I'll probably just hide that to the back or I just won't care. I don't you know. I like imperfections, but I don't like broken things and this is broken right here. This has come apart. So I'm going to use E6000 glue. This is a great glue for all purpose. Like it will glue anything to anything. I'm gonna squeeze some of that in here and then I'm going to use masking tape as my grip, as my clamp, because there's nothing, all these round edges, it's just hard to clamp. So I'll show you how I do that. I used the shop vac over the basket to get rid of all the dust that was had accumulated over the years. And then next, it's time to paint. This is the fun part. I grabbed some chalk paint by Dixie Bell called Savannah Mist. It's a nice soft blue. You'll also notice that I started listening to a book on Audible. This is a great way to pass the time while you're painting. For the corbels, I'm going to use Miss Mustard Seeds Milk Paint. Now maybe you're wondering why I use two different kinds of paint. I use chalk paint for some projects and milk paint for others. I love the milk paint because it creates this amazing, authentic chippy paint finish.
The glue is all dried on the areas where I had to clamp and glue on the little tables. It was time to fill the holes and I made a huge mistake. Stay tuned for the rest of the video to see what I did wrong. While I waited for the Bondo to dry, I cleaned the other table with a solution of TSP cleaner by Dixie Bell. I wiped it down with a microfiber cloth and then I went back over it with a clear, clean cloth. Here's my huge mistake. I forgot to mix the hardener in with the tube of Bondo. I thought I had the pre-mixed stuff and I didn't. I had the two-step process Bondo mix. So it did not harden completely and I had to start from scratch. You've probably noticed that I go back and forth between projects. So here it is the next day. The first coat of milk paint has dried on the corbels and it's time to put the second coat on. But look at the texture that this creates and the roughness. I really love this and I cannot wait to show you how I chip up this paint. For now, let's go ahead and put on the second coat. I let the E6000 dry overnight on the pitcher and it's time to take off the tape. Keep watching to see how it turns out. Back to the basket. That chalk paint has to be sealed and Dixie Bell makes a great spray wax. It's so easy to use. I just sprayed the entire surface with the spray wax and let it set overnight. All right, we're gonna turn this bird cage into a hanging lamp. I love making these lamps. The lamp kit comes on Amazon. I think they're only about $10 each, really inexpensive. And here you can see I'm just attaching it with zip ties and I just strung it right through the wires use plenty of zip ties to hold it steady and I'll put an Edison bulb in this and hang it. I can't wait to tell you about where it's gonna hang. All right, so you can't just hang it from the cord. You have to use something else. You can either use a chain like I'm using here or that rope that I just showed you. And there are several ways to hang it. If you use a chain, you just need the hook that comes with it and you screw it into the ceiling. Or if you wanna hang it from the cord, the kit also comes with that little plastic piece that will give it some stability, and then you just hang it from the hook. I use the same light kit to turn an old oil can into this hanging light in my workshop. I really do enjoy it. I also added string lights just to make it sparkle. But yeah, that's my light over top of my workbench. Okay, we're back inside and we're gonna clean up this silver pitcher. I love this Earth Bright Cleaner. It cleans any kind of metal that you can imagine. It's so easy on your hands. It doesn't, no chemicals. It's just great stuff. Look at the difference. Things were going really good until that happened. So the E6000 did not set up correctly. I think because I left it outside in my workshop and it's really cold. E6000 is one of those glues that needs just the right temperature in order to cure correctly. And I just overlooked that. Later when my husband got home that evening, he tried to weld the handle back on. And I, I don't know, there's something weird about welding certain metals. And anyway, it did not work. So I came up with another plan. I decided that this would no longer be a pitcher and instead it would be a vase and I would just leave the handle off, but I still had to fix that little foot problem. So I made my old mold out of hot glue around one of the existing little feet and then I peeled it off and the plan was to fill it with Bondo mixed correctly this time to make my own little foot. Once the foot was already made, I put the Bondo inside and I allowed it to dry and harden overnight. Stay tuned to see if this idea worked. Now for the little side table. You can see that that Bondo did not dry, so I sanded it down. It was late at night when I did that. And I reapplied some Dixie Bell mud. It's a wonderful wood filler. I really love this product. And I applied it and then I allowed it to dry and I sanded it smooth. Getting the hardened Bondo out of the mold was harder than I thought and I broke it. I was frustrated with the pitcher at this point so I decided to do something fun and distress the corbels with a knife. I just take the edge of a knife 
over all the high points and I scrape until it creates this beautiful, authentic looking chippy finish. And then I take sandpaper, a very worn out sanding sponge, and I go over the whole piece just to smooth it out. This is such a fun way to distress any kind of piece, whether it's furniture or little home decor pieces like this. It's just a lot of fun. You have to try it. I grabbed my shop vac and got all of the dust off of the pieces and also off of the surface. And then I use these painter's points to hold the pieces up so that when I apply this clear coat, it won't stick to that piece of cardboard. I use Dixie Bell's Gator Hide because it's a heavy duty clear coat. Let's do a little bit more of paint therapy. And I chose to use Dixie Bell's In the Navy chalk paint. It's a gorgeous, deep, rich blue and I applied it to uh, one, two coats to both the tables. And you'll see I'm using a mister. That mister bottle is just water and it helps the chalk paint to just glide over the furniture piece. So we're dry, I use the same distressing technique over top of the high edges. You can see here all over the edges and I just scrape off a little bit of the paint. If you do this, be careful not to gouge the furniture. All I'm doing is lightly scraping off the top layers of paint. I sealed both tables with Dixie Bell's clear wax. It's a water-based wax, goes on with a wax brush, and then you wipe it back with a blue shop towel. It leaves just such a gorgeous finish, and it does take about 30 days to completely cure. By the way, all of the supplies are going to be listed below this video in the See More section. Okay, let's hang these corbels. I'm going to hang them on either side of my stove just to add some interest to the stove area in our kitchen. My husband added a block of wood to the top of each because there was like a recessed section underneath my cabinet and I didn't want most of the corbel to be hidden by that recessed section. I tried to hang the corbels using the hooks that were already on the back. You can also see I have a stack of books there to act as a third hand. Anyway, I could not get those corbels to hang on those brackets, so I decided to hang them from inside the cabinet. I drilled down, pre-drilled all the holes, and then I added these screws to hold the corbel in place. Once I had them all attached, I looked back at it and it was not straight. So my husband came home and he helped me to figure out a way to make it straight. We added shims and we had to add some pieces. I don't know, I think the corbels were a little off kilter. And eventually the next morning, I finished everything off with all those shims. I used caulking to seal up any of the holes and the gaps. Then I used some touch up paint to cover up the color of the shims. I'm excited to show you the reveal of the five projects that we just completed, but I gotta tell you, two of those projects really gave me a run for my money. I'll talk about that here in a minute. For now, we're in my kitchen, and I'm just going to show you the projects, the completed projects right here. It is too cold out in my workshop. It is super cold here in Delaware. It's rainy. I am not even gonna, going to go out there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the reveals of these projects. First up was super simple. It was just this basket. Remember, I think I paid a dollar for it. Now I can't remember. I think it was a dollar. It was a really nice wicker basket. I just wanted to freshen it and make it my own. This is going to be a wonderful storage basket in my bathroom. I have some narrow shelves that this will be perfect to store all the stuff that you need in your bathroom. So the next thing that we worked on is this hanging birdcage lamp. Now this is going to go on my front porch. You can see here, it's gonna hang right there. I'm going to put an Edison bulb in here and it's going to hang right on my front porch, but I'm gonna wait a little bit of time before I put it out there. So here in the future, when I do a little spring refresh of our front porch, be sure to stay tuned because you'll see this hanging on the front porch. For now, I'm just going to keep it in my craft room until the weather warms up a little bit. Next up are the two little nesting tables that I painted. Now remember, those nesting tables usually come in sets of three. There's like a small, medium, and large, and they kind of interlock. I'll show you here in a minute, but they interlock with one another and they're just really pretty little tables. I only have a pair of two because I guess the third one was permanently broken or whatever. I painted in this gorgeous Dixie Bell Navy color. It's called In the Navy. Did a little bit of distressing. This pair of tables that I have sitting right over here, 
It's going to sit in my living room between two chairs. Now I want to show you these chairs because I have an idea for them. Well, let me go put the tables over there so you can see the chairs and then I'll tell you my idea for the chairs. So here are the two red chairs that I'm talking about. I know this looks a little weird. I have one turned one way and one facing this way, but these chairs both face that direction into our living space. That kitchen that we were just in is just over here to my left. And this is where I'm going to put this little pair of nesting tables. It'll be a nice little place to set a drink. I'll have these chairs both turned around towards the living room. But here's the thing. You can see they are, they might be showing up red, but they're actually like a cranberry color. And the color is beautiful. These are 1930s or 40s chairs. And they have the original velvet on them, which has really been beautiful, but it's worn out. So I'll be reupholstering these chairs soon. I can't wait to show you that project and I have a question about that so I'm going to ask you that in a minute don't leave me yet but when I reupholster these the blue tables are going to go just great with the fabric that I have picked out and it'll be a nice little spot for our guests to sit and watch TV with us or enjoy the fireplace here are the chairs turned around towards the living room towards facing our fireplace and our TV and just don't mind all the cords from the camera gear I have camera gear all over the place just so I can shoot this video so don't mind the white cord in the background but you can see the two chairs here the nice little nesting tables between them they're just right it's a nice and open kind of look I love that but these chairs are going to have a makeover and I have a question to ask you about those okay so here is the question see those red chairs with that blue I'm going to reupholster reupholster them I already have the fabric and I have all the supplies ready to go but I want to know if you want to come along and here's what I'm thinking let me know down in the comments what you think of this and if you think it would work I don't even know if I could swing it or not but I would like to reupholster those those chairs during some YouTube live videos. So here's how it would be. I would have to do some of the work during the day and then go live for just a few minutes, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes to tell you about what I did that day, what step I was on in the process of reupholstering. And then hopefully over a span of doing that a little bit each day, we would get those two chairs reupholstered in about a month because I do have other work to do too. But we could maybe get those reupholstered together and you could come along the process with me. I'd love to know what you think about that. Let me know down in the comments and we just might do that in the future. Oh, hey, we're back in the kitchen. Epic fail number one. Actually, I only have one epic fail. The other one's not a fail, but it was a struggle. This little project was such a disappointment. So remember I bought this, the handle was loose. I glued it on, I taped it up as a good clamp system. You saw all that, it still fell off. My husband tried to weld it, that didn't work either. I don't understand welding, but certain metals have to be welded with certain metals. That's not my expertise by any means. And we really didn't know the origin of this, so that didn't work. I was like, that's okay. It still is pretty on its own as a as a, as a vase, kind of. I think with spring flowers, it would be so pretty. So I thought, okay, let me just mold one of these little feet with the hot glue method I showed you. That was a fail because this is dimensional. It's not just a flat surface that I'm trying to get an imprint on. Like you see on some furniture, I can't find anything in here, but like you see on some furniture, you'll see some decorative scroll work. That hot glue method works perfectly for that. My little mold, I just could not get the Bondo down in there. It broke off. It just was a disaster. And when I was working on it, I didn't even film it. I don't think I filmed that. I can't remember if I filmed that part or not. Anyway, I was not able to make a little foot. I may or may not, plus there was a little bit of damage. It's on the inside. It doesn't really matter. But on the outside, there's a little bit of discoloring from the torching with the, I guess that's what it's called when you weld. I'm not so worried about that because I could probably polish that out. The problem is it will not set steady because that leg is missing. I'd be concerned to put water in here with flowers. That could be iffy. But if I get some faux flowers they have a lot of real life flowers that are out on amazon i could just turn that leg to the back you would never see that it's missing and just have it in the front and to me that's still a really pretty picture i'm going to hold on to it i've not given up completely but for this video that's all i have if i manage to get another idea for this i'll be sure to take a photo and put it in my community post in the coming weeks so subscribe to our channel i don't want you to miss our community posts we like to share there as well here on youtube and i'll just grab a shot of this and i'll show you what what it looks like with some faux flowers in it my favorite project of all 
are the corbels, and you can see where I have them underneath of our stove. They were a bear to get in here. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But you can see I took those, they were shelving brackets. We painted them, distressed them to make them look like old corbels, and then put them underneath our cabinet here on either side of the stove. I really like how they look. Let me bring you in for a closer look. And here are the corbels. I really love how they turned out. I like the look that they add here to the stove area. Now I did have some trouble getting them mounted Mounted. We did mount them on the inside. They are mounted. Yeah, there you go. You can see those four screws in the back. We had to add that piece of wood. You saw that. You saw my husband installing them. Actually, the next morning I had to come in and take them down because they just were not straight and I just needed them to be straight. And it just wasn't working out. It was late at night. We were just having a hard time. We were both hungry for dinner. So I got up this morning and finished installing them. You can see that. They turned out really good. I really like how they turned out. I had to use some shims. You can't really see it now because I have I had to shim it up here and up in here. Where? Oh, up in there. Then I painted it so you you can't even tell that I shimmed them. I like how they look. To me, it adds a new dimension to the kitchen, to the stove area. A little bit of interest, architectural interest. Yep, I'm real happy with those. So I wanna encourage you with those last two projects especially. If you run into a problem when you're upcycling and repurposing, just keep pressing on something's gonna come of it. Even if it's like the silver pitcher and it doesn't come right away, or if you have to press on like I did with those corbels to get them to hang just right, just press on and you're going to have some success. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot for watching. I'd love to know your comments. Tell me which of the five is your favorite project. The bird cage, the lamp, the tables, the corbels, or the silver pitcher that just didn't work out. Or if you have an idea about that silver pitcher, let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.